Hello, Marcel here to give you a quick overview of grooms in Ornatrix for Maya, what they are, how to use them, and how to create them. Grooms essentially are an Ornatrix version of a preset system, where you have a bunch of files that can set up your hairstyle or hair groom in a particular way using a set of Ornatrix operators. To show them quickly, let me just create a quick sphere to which I'm going to apply a very simple groom. So there are a few grooms that already come with Ornatrix when you install it, and you can use this grooms right away. If I have my polygonal sphere here, I can click on the quick hair button here and it's going to bring up the select groom dialog. As you can see, I have two options now. I have the feathers groom and I have my fur ball groom. These grooms are pulled from this directory, which is the default directory. You can change them to some other folder on your computer and it will remain on that directory until you go back to this one. To go back to the default directory, you can always click the default location button and it's going to bring you back to this home groom folder. So if if I just double click on the furball groom, you can see that it creates a familiar furball for us inside Maya and it sets up all of the operators in the hair stack to their default values. I can undo this and let me try this time to instead create a feather groom. If I create my feathers groom, they are created a bit large at first, but you can see that the stack is different at this point and I can go back and change the length of my feathers to make them a little bit more believable, but essentially we get a mesh that is a bunch of polygonal flat hairs on your character and they have a surface comb node applied to them. Just like applying them to a sphere, the beauty of grooms is that it doesn't matter which underlying mesh you use, so I can use a polyplane and just the same way as I use a sphere, or if I use a character mesh or a scalp or any other distribution object like that, I can go and apply a groom to it at any point and it's going to use this distribution surface to generate my hair. Another cool part about grooms is that I don't even have to have a mesh per se. I can instead start out with a bunch of curves. So let me just draw a few curves in my viewport. And if I have my curves selected and I start applying a groom, it's going to give me a groom preset which is applicable only to curves. So in this case, hair from curves. If I do this inside my hair stack, I can see that we have a guides from curves node to which we can apply a hair from guides node and we can ground this onto a mesh or do any other operations which are covered in a separate tutorial. If we don't have anything selected, we get all of the grooms available. And for example, I can create a fur ball, but it's just going to create a plane for me to apply the fur ball on to, so this is not really particularly useful. You typically want to have something selected inside your scene to which you will apply the groom. So if I create my sphere again and apply a furball groom back onto it, I can now go and edit the parameters of this groom normally as I would. And we even get the edit guides shape applied automatically so we can go and style our hair. But let me change a few parameters of this groom. So maybe I can change the length of it and maybe I can apply some operators on top of my hair. So let me add a freeze operator just to make hairs a little bit freezier. And maybe on top of that, I will apply guide clustering modifier just to cluster my hairs a little bit and change the curve to make them uh, spiky like this. And maybe I'll finish off by applying a curling modifier just to curl my hairs a little bit. And I'll curl them less at the top and more down the middle. So let's say I have done a whole bunch of operations like this. And now I want this style of hair to be reusable and I want to save itself as a preset that other people can use within either the same studio or maybe I want to send this to my friends or even I myself can reuse the same style in the future. So what I can do is select these hairs and go into the order tricks shelf and click the button next to the quick hair button which is the generate groom button. This will create a preset file for us and it allows us to specify the name so let's call this groom spiky and we can even create a thumbnail for it which will appear inside the grooms dialog. So to create the thumbnail I'm just going to quickly print screen here, go into Photoshop and edit my file in a way that I have an image of my hair so I'm just going to crop it and create a little icon for the spiky hair. Maybe I'll create some transparency effect by removing the background color and I'm going to make sure that the size of the thumbnail is going to be 64 by 64 pixels. So once I'm happy with the preview I'm going to save it as a PNG file. I'm gonna call it spiky thumbnail. So back in Maya, I can use the thumbnail option here to select my spiky thumbnail file that I have just created. And the last part is to click on this base object is optional checkbox, which will allow to create this groom even if no object selection initially exists, just like we tried before. So I'm just going to click the generate button and the groom has been created for us. So if I create another sphere right now, if I go and click on the quick hair button, we now have the spiky groom along with its thumbnail available in the option. So if I double click it, 
we get the same exact room planted onto our sphere. And in fact, we don't have to have a sphere. We can do the same with a character. So if I had a scalp right now, the same groom would be applied to a scalp. There are also a couple of other options that apply when creating groom. There is a scale option which you can use to change the length and other scale parameters inside the groom. So for example, I can make the groom twice as large by setting the scale to two. And then there is a detail option as well. So maybe I can also make it twice as detailed. So if I double click on my spiky groom now, you see that the created groom is actually twice as long. And we also get more definition and more detail on the strands themselves, which means each strand consists of twice as many points as our previous groom and thus has much more detail. If you open up the actual directory where the grooms are saved, you will find these grooms as a bunch of files with an aux groom extension. And these files are entirely self-contained, which means the thumbnail that we generated is also inside of them. So to share my groom, all I have to do is copy this file and send it to whomever I want, or I can back it up for later usage. And if I take one of these groom files and if I open it inside a text editor, you can see that it is essentially an XML file containing my thumbnail inside this data block here. And in fact, I can remove this and in this case, it will use the default thumbnail. And then it has our hair stack here. And the hair stack is filled with a bunch of operators which are represented as XML elements. And if I open the feather groom, you can see that we also have the same setup except the formatting here is not as nice, but these elements can also have our parameters and this defines our groom. You don't really have to know about this because all of this is automatically managed and generated by Ornatrix. But one other interesting aspect is that these grooms are compatible with both Ornatrix for Maya and Ornatrix for 3ds Max. So essentially you can generate this groom as an asset inside of Maya and then you can open 3ds Max and let me do that right now. Once I have 3ds Max up instead of Maya shelf, we now have an Ornatrix toolbar instead. And it has a couple of familiar buttons. The first one is the quick hair button and the other one is for generating groom just like we had in Maya. So let me just create a sphere and when I press the quick hair button, you can see that spiky appears in here just like it did in Maya. And if I apply it, the groom is created and it should look pretty much like what we created inside Maya because the hair stack has been converted into Ornatrix modifier stack and all of these operators contain matching parameters to whatever we have defined inside Maya. So this is nice back and forth workflow and the way for you to be able to create assets which are shareable across multiple applications that are using Ornatrix in the future. So these are grooms in Ornatrix and this is a quick introduction to them inside Maya. Thank you very much for watching.